games. Ooh, yo. <laughs> a muffled voice uttered from inside a closet. With a squeak, the closet door opened. With a squeak, I said. And a horrible creature emerged. I gave them everything. If you cannot find that spooky gang with the go engine a terrible fate await you without a doubt banana hell is the game of your dreams if you dream of being a very very haunting banana jumping around in this case get help but also buy this game it is painfully hard just like my Zwieback. I'm speaking of pixel perfection. Perfection. Just like Banana Man's dialogue. This digital torture experience was brought to you by Petri Hard, and you can get it on Steam. I mean, it's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? Ten dollars? Actually, it costs only two dollars. The creature was hungry, but on its hand, a toaster blocked its way. A fight started, and the creature found its first victim. In the Witch's Maze, you explore a maze. Amazing. Which is legally owned by a witch, apparently. Anyways, this evil old lady abducted you. And you are trapped in her garden where she chases you. It looks to me like the type of game that seems a little bit cheesy until you put on headphones and turn off the lights. Basically good old Slendermanian fun, with jump scares and all. It plays off the primal fear of turning around and seeing an old evil lady behind you, which is the worst kind of fear. Want to get abducted? Get this game by Friendmaster2000 for just 1 euro and 50 cent on Steam. A wall blocked the creature's way. With pure force, the creature ripped a hole into the wall. Goldfish Brain is another game where you play a really weird character and I can get behind that. You are a goldfish dressed as a guy, so you can jump and do platforming stuff. It is a very competently made Metroidvania. You can tell it is a good game because there is a laser in the trailer, as well as this creepy giant pounding heart. It also has bosses and a ton of items. The game was made by Iron Liver Games and you can get it for 4 euros on Steam. If you are quick, you can grab a free download on itch.io. There are 20 copies left. I like roguelikes and I like action RPGs. Striving for light is both. I see some Binding of Isaac in there. I see a lot of Path of Exile in there. I like both. 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 Both is good. Except for these sounds. They give me flashbacks of the trials and I hate them. But except for them, really, really good. So remember the huge confusing skill tree that is actually a skill graph from Path of Exile? Striving for Light saw that, found it pathetic, and gives you a fully randomized spawn with each run. And I find this pretty genius. Skill builds always had the problem that for most people, getting them from a forum is by far the most effective way to play the game, but not the most fun way. A randomized skill tree solves this problem, and it makes sense. People are different and can learn different things. Like Dorothea, she has learned how to edit videos, but my intelligence stat was too low for that. It is also dark and totally bizarre. If the game is not totally broken, or totally broken but in a fun way, this will be amazing. Striving for Light is being developed by Igniting Spark Games, and the demo is available on Steam and itch.io. A knife stand caught the creature's eye. It carefully considered which weapon to choose. In Candela, you play as a candle that... Am I getting all the games with weird characters on purpose? Yes. So what we have here is a nice little puzzle platformer with color puzzles. You can pick up red and blue flames. You can also drop them. And when you combine red and blue, it gets pink. Your flame color affects blocks, so you have to position them in a clever way. It looks really nice with shrooms lighting up and all. It's cute, I like it. I always wanted to be a candle when I grow up. Candela was made by Gemini Max and you can play your demo of it on itch.io. The creature burned an innocent slice of bread. It then desecrated its victim with screws for whatever reason. 
Dark Sheep is one of those puzzle games where you push blocks around. Man, I had one of these when I was a child. Your main character was a bulldozer and I loved it. But in Dark Sheep you are something even cooler. A guy in a coat that loves Satan. So you push stuff onto little pentagrams and such. It really reminds me of that bulldozer game, but this one is much better suited for Halloween. And look, you can push little sheep to sacrifice them. That is so cute. You get dark sheep for around 3 euro on Steam, which is much less than a regular sheep costs. It was made by Daisy Games, who recently released another spooky game called Dark Crypt that you should also check out. Mary pleased the creature took a rest. But for how long? Ine nicht? In Nay, you play a dark creature that just loves its equally dark puppy. And who wouldn't? It is so cute. A bit terrifying, but cute. In order to protect your precious little papa, you embrace your inner darkness. But be careful not to scare him. The creator of this beautiful adventure is Ben Liga, and a demo is waiting for you on Steam. The creature performed a dark and menacing ritual. No one knows to which unholy god it prays. In Cloaks and Capes you play a wizard that battles against really, really large guys. Man, do they throw a lot of stuff at you. A full screen filled with fire, or dark spheres, or horseshoes of doom. Okay, sometimes the art looks a bit rough, like the scroll, but the boss battles look amazing. Lots of different phases and attacks, and very, very cool creatures. The player character is very mobile, using multiple jumps and dashes. The game is made by Deskracht's games. You can play the demo on Steam and buy the full version soon. The creature forgot its weapon in the kitchen. If you go to spookyghosts.com, you can find this amazing website where you can buy the URL. But if you go to the Steam page of spookyghosts.com, you find a nice platformer. You can blast cute spookers. I love the bizarre ghosts. You can also ride a huge cat and collect cats. It is cool. It has cats. And don't forget to buy candy from this giant frog for only $500. Seems like a good and trustworthy offer. Or you give Sirtak 5 euros to buy his game. Might be the better decision. I don't know. Oh, by the way, we make a game that is almost somewhat spooky as well. In First of Us Fungeon, we draw every damage zone and every fly path on the ground, so you have a fair chance when we unleash an insane amount of stuff. Click the link in the description and wishlist it on Steam. In 3.5 Deep, you play a guy that plays a guy. This finally fulfilled my fantasy of feeling like a true gamer, even if it was only in the game. But honestly, it is a pretty cool idea for a horror game, because your brain gets kind of confused about whether you are playing a game, where you are playing a game, and what layer of reality affects which one. Because it is messed up, you do stuff in the game, in the game, that affects stuff in the first layer of game. The game is made by TNTC Lab, and you can play it in the browser. But be aware... If you die in the game, you die for real. Not instantaneous, of course, that would be impossible, but at some point you will. 70 years or so, I guess. So with that reminder of your own mortality, have a nice evening. So these were 10 spooky Godot games. We really hope you like them. And if you do, give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye.